Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a problem from a book called Higher Algebra by Hall and Knight. I'll try to share some links down below so you can take a look. Great, so we are given that z is negative 1 plus root 3i divided by 2 and we're supposed to evaluate 1 plus z squared to the fourth power. All right, so it's a really nice problem. It's not too hard. It's probably not too easy somewhere in between. So I'll be presenting more than one method. Let's see how many we can come up with. And let's start with the first method. Since I don't know how many methods I'm going to be able to come up with. Okay, great. The first method would definitely be straightforward substitution, right? Because substitution is awesome. So why not just evaluate one plus z squared and then I can raise it to the fourth power, hopefully. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this number with negative 1 plus root 3i divided by 2. I'm going to square that and add 1 to it and see what happens. Okay, just experiment. So square this, I'm going to square negative 1 and that's going to be a 1. And when I multiply the 2ab thing, minus 2, 3, 2 root 3i. And when you square root 3i, you're going to get 3i squared, which is negative 3. All of that is divided by 4. And then let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. 1 minus, I negated it. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So I'm going to be able to put it as 2 plus 2 root 3i divided by 4. Obviously, this fraction can be simplified. I can write it as 1 plus root 3i over 2. And then making a common denominator, 2 minus 1 minus root 3i over 2. And finally, this becomes 1 minus root 3i over 2. Awesome. We started with something like this and we got the opposite. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. I take Z, square it and add one. Then I get the opposite of Z. Does that make sense? It should mean something to you. Okay. But hold on to that for now because we're about to raise this to the fourth power. So just straightforward brute force C method. I'm going to raise this to the fourth, but I want to do it. I don't want to do it right away because raising to the fourth power can be crazy. And that could be complicated. So I'm going to square it twice. If you square this, you're going to get what? 1 minus 2 root 3i minus 3 divided by 4. That is negative 2 minus 2 root 3i over 2. Right? I kind of simplified it. And that is negative 1 plus root, I mean minus, right? Negative 1, I should probably write it down here. Negative 1 minus root 3i. Okay? So what I did was uh, negative 2. Okay, actually, no, that's not right because we had to uh, divide by 4. So this is still 4. And then if I simplify it, it's going to be negative 1 minus root 3i over 2. Yeah, I shouldn't lose the 2 at the bottom. That, would, that doesn't make sense, right? Great. So now that is the second power. And I'm going to square this again one more time to get z to the fourth. And that's going to be, if you square this, you can kind of think of it this way too, by the way. This is the opposite, right? of this expression and if you square this the negative will is going to disappear so i might as well just square this makes sense that will be one plus two root three i minus three over four that is negative two plus two root three i over four and that's going to be negative one plus root three i over two so that should be the answer right wait a minute didn't i start with that and i get the exact same thing like z are you serious? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it from another angle. Remember I told you, when you square z and add 1, you got the opposite. So that should mean something, right? Don't you think? Yes, it does. So I take z, I square it and add 1, and I get the opposite of z. This is the secret. This is the secret sauce. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And now we get a complex equation. Or... A quadratic equation with non-real solutions, complex solutions. And guess what? These solutions should be fairly obvious if you are familiar with multiplying both sides by z minus 1. Make sure z does not equal 1 because it doesn't satisfy the original equation. But it's okay to multiply under this assumption. Like if you can assume that z does not equal 1, I can do it. So this gives us z cubed minus 1 equals 0, which means z cubed equals 1. In other words, z is cube roots of 1, but it can't be 1. 
So the other cube roots, because remember in the complex world, one has three cube roots. One of them is the principal value, the other ones are whatever, but we don't care because what we care about is what? What do we care about? I forgot. One plus d squared to the fourth power, exactly. So we do care about this. So what is this, right? <laughs> How do you find it? Well, we just found out that z squared plus one is negative z. So let's just replace this with negative z and then raise it to the fourth and that becomes z to the fourth. Should we call this the second method? Probably. Let's go on and call it that because we kind of started talking about something else. Now, z to the fourth power is, since z cubed is one, we can write z to the fourth as z cubed times z. And since z cubed is one, it just becomes z. But z is negative one plus root three i over two. So that will be the answer. So if you answered negative one plus root three i over two, you're right. If you said z is the answer, you're also right. So there's more than one way to answer this question, which is nice, right? Okay, so it's kind of like a multiple choices. <laughs> uh, cool. So what is another way to approach this problem? Let's go ahead and take a look at maybe a possible third method. Let's see if you can do something like that. And ab there's absolutely something that you can do, which is about polar forms. All right. Here's how it goes. I can write z as negative one half plus root three over two i. So these numbers should be familiar to you. One half and root three over i, I mean root three over two, always appear on the unit circle for 30, 60, 120, 150, so on and so forth. But in this case, I have a negative cosine and a positive sign. So I'm in the second quadrant and notice that the absolute value of the sign is bigger. So I should be here. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of all the other angles. Oops, where's my eraser? Uh oh, too much erase, <laughs> too much. I erased too much, but hopefully we can put it back. Here we go. So this is the angle I'm looking for. The cosine is negative one half and sine is root three over two. Got it? And what is that? This is 30 degrees, that's 120 degrees. But what is 120 degrees? Two pi over three in radians. So from here, theta is two pi over three. And of course the modulus is one because you run the unit circle, hello. So from here we can write z as e to the power i times two pi over three. That, that makes sense? I was able to write in polar form. And what am I gonna do with this? Raise it to the second power, add one, and then raise it to the fourth power. Now, if you raise it to the second power, you're gonna get e to the power i times four pi over three. Here's the crazy part. If you add one to it, what are you gonna do with that? Okay, there's a couple ways to go about it. You could do it, but let me tell you something. You could also go off of this. Let's square this and then square one more time. This gives us z to the fourth plus two z squared plus one, and then we're gonna square the whole thing, right? Now notice that this is z and that's z squared. What is z to the fourth? z to the fourth is just gonna be uh, multiplying uh, the angle by four. That's gonna give you e to the power i times eight pi over three, and eight pi over three obviously is greater than two pi, so it contains two pi in it. If you subtract six pi over three from it, you're gonna end up with e to the power i times two pi over three, which is the same thing as z. Make sense? Okay, so this is the same as z. And what about this, right? That's the thing you need to find out. There's probably an easy way to go about it, but I don't know. We're gonna stop here and complete and go back to the second method because I think it's really cool. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.